guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Usil and today I have a bag full of empties to show you. So I'm just going to sort this out real quick and then I'll choose products that I feel are worth talking about, whether they're good or bad. Alright, so I've categorized this into hair, body, skincare, and just miscellaneous. I also have a few um, declutters this time around. And if you're wondering, perfume and makeup empties are going to be in a different video. Probably in one of my project pan videos or um, sometimes I combine a project pan update with a shop my stash and then I also include declutters or empties in there. So keep an eye on that, but I'm not going to include any perfume empties or Make, uh, makeup empties in this video but I do have a nail empty I don't often have nail empties because I have first off I have issues with my nails they're very uh, weak then I've just taken a break with nail polish I do use press-ons which doesn't really help for my nails but I uh, really enjoy this join me press on gel nail I can't remember what shades these were in i think they were nude but i use them over and over again i just apply them when they start coming off i take them off and then i rinse off the glue and i apply them again after my nails have um, had a little bit of a break i don't like to apply new nails straight away after but these are really inexpensive so i like to purchase these ones and they're also super flexible and they look very natural on the nail. I am also quickly going to mention my favorite hand cream. This is not, I don't believe this works for me in the face because I have tried it in my face for um, different skin issues. The only recommendation I have when it comes to this is to put it on your hands if you have eczema or very dry skin on your hands this is the only thing that saves me i have a big or the remainings of a big bottle and then a smaller uh, tube this is just the best aco conaldatum five percent carbamide cream so so good so i just put on my prescription cream and then i put this on top and it works wonders. It's pretty much the only thing that works, but you have to be a little bit careful with this because it um, it does thin your skin quite a bit. So I do like to give my hands, again, a little bit of a breather with just other more gentle uh, hand creams, like the one from CeraVe is one that I'm using at the moment in addition to this one. I think I'm just going to show you the declutters. I have four of them. This is probably the last time you see this one. I had this, I had mentioned this in my best and worst of 2023. This is from Veleda for men, but I bought it for myself. Shaving cream, gentle care for smooth shaving for all skin types. I don't really care too much what kind of shaving cream I use. I just use whatever I have. And this was on sale and I do like the brand Valeda. It is cruelty free and natural, just a nice brand. I have a few um, favorites from that brand, but this one just didn't do it for me. I now get that it says it's for men because the perfume or the scent in this cream is very, very, very masculine and it's, I don't like it at all. It lingers for a while and the product itself is super thick and not possible to spread out and it just doesn't help me while shaving. So I, I really gave this a go, but will not recommend this. Not for men, not for women. Also, this one is actually almost empty. I'd say it's about, I'm about here. This is a scalp care anti-thinning conditioner for fuller and stronger hair by Paul Mitchell. 
I think this is a pretty good brand. I bought this at a hair salon because I am having trouble with my hair thinning and so I thought I would give this a go. But again, this is one of those products that smell really, really bad. Very masculine slash herbally scent, very, very strong. And again, it lingers for quite a while after I've washed my hair and it doesn't do anything for my hair as far as I can see. But I'm trying my best to take care of my hair and skin and my body this winter has not been cooperating very well and uh, yeah I just had to give this up. Right now I'm using an amazing conditioner so I hope things will turn around and you'll probably hear about that in my next empties but for this one it did not condition my hair, it, it did not leave my hair <clears throat> smooth or detangled or shiny, nothing, it did nothing for my hair. So I'm gonna declutter this. This is just a product I kind of forgot about. It's not really bad. I don't have anything bad to say about it. It's from Ida Varg, Self Tanning Water Mist, 100% vegan, tropical scented. As you can see, I didn't use too much of this, but it smells okay, but it has changed in smell, I will say that. It has been standing in my bathroom for the past two years and it's a self tanning product and I just don't believe it's good anymore. So I'm assuming it has expired, but I remember when I first used it, it just gave me a very light um, spread of warm glow, I would say. It didn't really tan my skin, but it just made my skin look a lot healthier and like I had just been out in the sun for a little bit and it looked natural as well. I really did like it, but it just, it's not a typical product that I remember to use. I did also wasn't really sure how to use it, like at what time can I reapply it? Should I use it as a setting spray, sort of like a finishing spray after I've done my makeup or should I use it as a part of my skincare routine? I just wasn't sure how I was supposed to use this. So I just kind of never get, gave it too much thought and just forgot about it. So now it's expired and I'm, I'm gonna have to let this go. Also, Dr. Papa, I, I didn't use this much. It's like a multi-purpose soothing balm with natural papa, whatever that means. Uh, I guess it's papaya or something. <laughs> For lip, skin, hair, and beauty finishing cuticles and nails fragrance breeze. I'm sure this is a good balm, but I just never really used it. I probably used it like less than five times, I'm guessing. So, and I've had it for so long now that I have to declutter it. A scent, like a home scent from Rituals. This smells so nice. This is the Ritual of Mare. I'm not going to talk too long about this. I just love this scent. Rituals is just one of my favorite brands. They have so many nice scents. Which brings me to my body care. I don't have many body care products this um, time around, but I have two shower mousse, shower gels. Shower mousse and shower gel. This one's from Ritual. This is the Ritual of Jing, which is my favorite scent, but I'm not sure if they carry this anymore or if they've I believe they've changed the name, but they still carry the scent or something like that. But these are really, really nice. Calming Foaming Shower Gel with Sacred Lotus and Jujube, whatever that means. Is that jojoba? I don't know. Then we have, again, the Edelbotic brand. I really like this brand. I, I believe it's a, a Swedish brand. Uh, pretty popular and affordable here in Norway. I ha even have one other product from her that I'm going to talk about. But this is their Vitalizing Shower Mousse for dull and tired skin. 100% vegan, cruelty free, really really nice. And the scent of these products from Edelotic is so nice. I love like a sweet tropical scent. They have different scents but a lot, most of them are on the sweeter side which I really like. And yeah, 
I'm probably going to repurchase one of these uh, shower mousses because they're so good. And just another body product, a deodorant from Sebamed, Balsam deodorant, 48 hours for sensitive skin, no aluminum salts. So I'm just trying to find a good deodorant that is cruelty free with no aluminum, but, but I believe this isn't cruelty free. I just got it because it was um, without any alcohol or aluminum and I didn't like it too much. It didn't do much for me. Oh, I forgot this. I have this as well um, from Diodoc, the Gentle Bubble Bath in Floral Peach. The lid broke off, so that's one complaint, but other than that, this was beautiful. It was so gentle to the skin. It smelled really nice and it lasted me for quite a while. So it might be a repurchase actually. Really, really like this brand, Diodoc, also cruelty free. And I really enjoy their intimate products like shaving cream, uh, intimate soaps that are pH balanced. And yeah, really love this brand. I also believe that they are Swedish and cruelty free, if I didn't say that. Uh, they also carry these soothing heat patches for menstruation, natural heat, developed with gynecologists. So these contain three patches that you can put on your stomach when you have uh, cramps or I actually use it on the back as well or on my shoulders. It, it doesn't really matter <laughs> wherever you have any muscle pains as well as these are just the best thing ever. This is the Ecobath London Muscle and Joint Epsom Salt Bath Soak. This is with lemongrass, peppermint, eucalyptus, and black pepper. I think, I believe this is my favorite. It has a few different scents. I think two other scents. Uh, they have like um, a purple, which I believe is lavender, and then a blue version. I don't remember the scent of that but I really, really like these Epsom salts just to put in the bathtub for whenever my body is really aching. Let's move on to hair care and then we'll do skincare in the end. I have two shampoos. Actually, no, I have three shampoos. This small one from Kevin Murphy. These are so handy. This is the Hydrate Me Wash travel size. I have a bunch of these. They're so nice for traveling and for just for trying out products because they have different sizes in bottles. And I really like this one. It's, it's a really good range from them. So it does what it's supposed to do. Hydrates and makes my hair really nice and silky. But really my favorite shampoo that I've tried in a very long time is this one. This is from Corez. It says for women, but I don't know. I don't I don't know why they have to say it's for men or women. It's just really I'm assuming that men can use this just as much as a woman, but it's a shampoo shampoo cysteine and glycoproteins anti hair loss. I, I also talked about this in my favorites of the year. I bought it for my hair loss issues. I I don't feel that it didn't much for me there or in that area, but it just really helped me with my oily hair. So that's really what I'm recommending this for. It did wonders there. So I'm definitely going to re um, repurchase this one and recommend it. I am pleasantly surprised by the hair care products that I've tried so far from Corez. I've mainly used or bought CARS products uh, in the skincare department and a little bit of body care as well. But this shampoo really impresses me and I've also had a hair mask previously that really did wonders as well as the conditioner that I'm using right now that's also from CARS. That is amazing. So highly recommend you guys trying it out especially if you have oily hair like me i think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised by the, their products i do really like the lanza uh, brand and this is their hair and body cleanser with keratin even though i really like this i think this is really good but i think if you overdo it 
it might be a problem and maybe that's what I've been doing. I don't know. I really don't know what's been going on with my hair, but it, it keeps breaking off. So it's it might have been just too much of this, but if you do this with care, <laughs> this is a really nice product. And then we have a dry shampoo from Edabotic. This is the Vanilla Fetch Dry Shampoo Refreshing Formula. It smells really nice. I do really like their dry shampoo. They're definitely not my favorite. They are a little bit sticky to the hair, but it does the job. I probably won't repurchase this one. My favorite one is from Living Proof and I think it always will be, but it's, it's affordable, it's cruelty free, so, and it works. So it's pretty good. I will say that and a lot cheaper than the one from Living Proof. And lastly for the hair, I have the Avita In Body Advanced Scalp Revitalizer. I just sprayed this thing in the roots where I had issues with hair loss and kind of massaged it in. And I'm just gonna be honest, I tried their conditioner, that's not too bad, but this one I just didn't see any results at all. Um, yeah, I can't say that this helped me. And it's pretty expensive, so I don't know. It's definitely not gonna be a repurchase for me. But I used it up, so I'm glad I did that. Now moving on to skincare. My next update when it comes to skincare is probably gonna be interesting to see because this past few, one, two months, maybe three months, I've really been struggling with my skin and I've been trying out different skincare products and skincare routines <clears throat> and it, nothing seems to help. I have super dry skin in my face and my eyes have some sort of an allergic reaction that I'm trying to figure out. I also overdid my hyaluronic acid in my face recently, which caused a lot of burning and irritation to my skin. Yeah, I've just really been struggling a lot. But I believe that most of these products that I'm showing you today really doesn't have much to do with that because these are products I, I used up a, a, a good while ago. But I will let you know uh, as we go through them. First off, this is one that has been laying in my empties for a while. This is the Pixie Glow Mist with Propolis and Argan Oil. I really miss this one. I, I haven't had this in months and months and it really does help my skin remain um, fresh and glowy and hydrated and I think I'm gonna repurchase one of these Maybe not right now because now I need to just use very few um, very few products until I figure out what is going on with my skin. But I will repurchase this one in the future, I'm pretty sure, because I really miss it. It's just so great for dry skin. I have a few skincare samples that I went through. I will say I have a little sample in a bigger like travel size from Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream or, and this says Ultra Facial Moisturizer. I'm assuming that it's the same product. I really like these ones. I also have a mask, overnight mask from Kiehl's that I really enjoy. I have an eye cream uh, at the moment that is kind of like the only eye cream that's working underneath my eyes right now and that my skin can handle. I enjoy these products, the only negative about this is that the brand is not cruelty free. So I'm really bummed about that, but I really do enjoy these products. The Super Multi Corrective Cream, also from Kiehl's, really like that one too. They do create some really good products, I will say that. I also have a few moisturizers for that I have. Uh, emptied since my last empties. One of my favorite um, daily moisturizers for the summertime is from Embryolis, the Le Creme Concentrate. It doesn't really do anything for me 
during the winter time it's just way too light but it is also working really nice as a makeup primer so probably we'll repurchase this one sometime in the future I have a bunch of these Clarins Hydra Essential Cream they're just samples or travel sizes that I've gotten either as gifts or gifts with purchase uh, Clarins is not cruelty free I don't really love this cream I yeah this might have contributed to drying out my skin even more it's hard to tell this one could also be a factor I absolutely love Paula's Choice they're not cruelty free anymore so this was kind of one of the last products I had from Paula's Choice up until yesterday when I ended up purchasing two products from them after talking to a dermatologist I just I have to try anything um, because I'm desperate right now so I broke my own rule not buying anything not cruelty free but I just can't seem to fix my skin issues in my face right now and so I'm really sad that I have to use products that aren't cruelty free but I just I don't know what else to do but this is the earth sourced antioxidant enriched natural mo moisturizer for all skin types i actually didn't mind using this this was a really nice multi-purpose cream i felt like it worked really nice as a day cream as an under eye cream and as a night cream all together so it was really nice for traveling and just for uh, minimizing my skincare routine. It says it's with cranberry and shea butter, hydrates naturally, replenishes and rejuvenates, and 98% natural. But I still am not sure if it did much for my skin. Maybe it even damaged it a little bit more. It also doesn't have good reviews from what I've seen, so it's not going to be a repurchase because of that. I I don't trust that this was a good product for my skin and I didn't see visibly results or feel it on my skin so I'm not going to repurchase that one. Neither will I repurchase the number 7 Protect and Perfect Intense Advanced Day Cream with SPF 15. Again, I didn't see this harm my skin at all. It was a good moisturizer. I have nothing bad to say about it. Number 7 is also cruelty free. But I didn't feel like it did enough for me to want me to repurchase this one. So I most likely won't. I also have an eye cream from Dr. Circle. Dr. Circle was kind of the brand I migrated to after breaking up with the Paula's Choice brand. So m most products in my skin skincare routine is from Dr. Circle at this point. But because I've had a mega overdose of hyaluronic acid, which is, I'll talk about this probably in a different video, but it seems like hyaluronic acid is a great uh, ingredient in skincare products when you want to hydrate your skin. But if you give it too much hyaluronic acid, it will do the exact opposite. And severely dry out your skin and irritate it and that's what I have been experiencing these um, last few days to week and all of my absolutely all of my products from Dr. Circle contains hyaluronic acid so I just have to either give them a break or just let them go all together which is such a shame because I really initially really really like them same with this eye cream actually i haven't checked if this contains hyaluronic acid it is the royal vita propolis 33 capsule eye cream revitalizing glowing skin and nourishing i just remember while using it 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 didn't i didn't feel like it caused any irritation or burning or redness or dryness or anything but at the same time, I've had about a year now 
where my skin, both underneath my eyes and the rest of my face, has just been severely dry. So I don't know if this was one of the factors that caused my skin issues. I just can't say at this moment. It's difficult when you love skincare and you try out all different kinds of products and then you end up not really knowing what caused the irritation. But I'm pretty sure the recent issues that I've had is a result of way too much hyaluronic acid. Also, I used up the Rituals uh, Radiant Glow Cleansing Balm with Moringa and Holy Lotus. This used to be my favorite cleanser and then they changed the formula, the, they changed the container and after they changed it, it just hasn't been the same. It's not as good as it once was. So I don't think I will repurchase this one either. I've used up two like micellar waters or I don't think this is technically a micellar water. This is from Lancome by Faisal non-oily instant cleanser for sensitive eyes. This is so nice. This is a little bit oily, so it doesn't leave my eyes feeling really dry. Whilst this one, this the Hydra Skin Micellar Water for All Skin Types from Makeup Mecca, this is doing an amazing job uh, removing eye makeup, especially like waterproof makeup, makeup that's hard to take off. But as a result of that, it really, really dries out my eyes. And I have a backup of a big bottle of this and a bottle the same size as this. And I don't know what to do with it because it's so, so good at removing makeup, but it really dries out my skin. I'm gonna have to either give this away or at least give it a long, long break because I used to use this every single morning because I I don't know with you guys but when I apply my eyeshadows I pretty much always have a lot of fallout underneath my eyes and I have to um, clean it up somehow and this is really good for that and then I would use it at night time as well while I was as a part of you know removing my eye makeup so that was probably not a good decision on my side. Uh, if you guys are wondering, my solar water is very drying to the skin. And I, I learned that the hard way. I used up two masks, the Hydra Skin Eye Mask with Moisturizing and Calming Avocado Extract for Soft and Smooth Skin. Uh, made in Korea by Makeup Mecca. 100% cruelty free. This was actually really nice. It's super affordable. Makeup Mecca is a Norwegian cruelty free brand that I I do really like. So the micellar water is from there as well, but I have skincare and makeup products from there that I do really enjoy. But it's also, you know, kind of similar to e.l.f. So it's there's a lot of hits and misses from that brand. And then I also have the Dr. Suracool Royal Vita Propolis Antioxidant Mask, which is also really, really nice and definitely recommend this one. It's really soothing and calming on the face and I'm not really a sheet mask kind of girl anymore. I used to be a big fan of the sheet masks. I'm just a little bit over that trend, but this one was really, really nice. And that is it. That is my entire bag of empties. I hope that you got something from watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you have a good day and I'll see you next time hopefully. Bye!